Halliday, originally known as Eliza Margaret McNally, was born around 1859 in County Antrim, Ireland. Her family relocated to the United States when she was quite young either at the age of three or eight. In 1879, Halliday married a man from Greenwich, New York, who was using the alias Charles Hopkins, but whose true name was Ketzbull Brown. They were reported to have had a son who later ended up institutionalized. Unfortunately, Charles Hopkins passed away, and shortly after, in 1881, Halliday married Artemis Brewer, a pensioner. However, their happiness was short-lived, as Brewer also passed away less than a year after their marriage. She then married Hiram Parkinson, but their union didn't last, and Parkinson left her within the first year of their marriage. Undeterred, Halliday went on to marry George Smith, a war veteran who had served alongside Brewer. It was later alleged that she attempted to harm Smith by lacing his tea with arsenic. In fear of the consequences, Lizzie fled to Bellows Falls, Vermont, and quickly married Charles Plaistel, a resident of Vermont. Strangely, she disappeared just two weeks after their marriage. In the winter of 1888, Halliday surfaced again in Philadelphia, frequenting a saloon on North Front Street run by the McQuillans, whom she had known from her Irish days. Assuming the name Maggie Hopkins, she established a shop but was eventually convicted of arson, having deliberately set it on fire to claim insurance money. This crime resulted in a two-year sentence at Philadelphia's Eastern State Penitentiary. In 1889, now going by the name Lizzie Brown, she became the housekeeper for Paul Halliday, a 70-year-old farmer who had been widowed twice and was residing in Burlingame, New York, along with his sons. Their marriage was troubled, with Halliday experiencing sporadic episodes of what she described as insanity. Additionally, she was found to have stolen a team of horses, which she later sold in Newburgh, New York. However, she was ultimately acquitted of this crime, with accounts differing on whether this occurred in 1890 or 1893, based on the grounds of insanity. In May 1891, a tragic incident unfolded when the Halliday house was consumed by flames, leading to the death of Halliday's mentally handicapped son, John. Suspicion arose once again, pointing to Lizzie Halliday as the culprit, as she was known to harbor resentment towards her own son. Despite her claims that John perished while trying to save her, evidence surfaced during the investigation, revealing a locked bedroom door in the debris, with Halliday in possession of the key. Disturbingly, not long after this event, the Halliday barn and mill were also set ablaze. Following these incidents, Lizzie attempted to elope with another man, but her plans were foiled, leading to her arrest and commitment to an asylum. She was later transferred to another facility, where she was eventually declared cured and released, returning to her home with Halliday. However, the mystery deepened in August, when Paul Halliday, Lizzie's husband, vanished without a trace. Lizzie claimed he had left for a nearby town to engage in masonry work. Neighbor suspicions arose, prompting the issuance of a search warrant. On September 4, a chilling discovery was made in a barn, the bodies of two women, later identified as Margaret and Sarah McQuillan, residents of New York whom Lizzie had known from her time in Philadelphia. Both women had been fatally shot. In the midst of the investigation, the situation took an even more sinister turn. Paul Halliday's mutilated body was found concealed beneath the floorboards of his own home, also bearing gunshot wounds. Lizzie Halliday was immediately charged with these shocking murders and confined to the Sullivan County Jail in Monticello, New York. Throughout her incarceration, her behavior was erratic and alarming. She engaged in self-destructive actions, including refusing to eat, attacking the sheriff's wife, setting fire to her own bed, attempting suicide by hanging, and even inflicting harm on herself with broken glass. Her actions led some to speculate that she might be feigning insanity. Given her dangerous conduct, jail authorities had no choice but to restrain her, resorting to chaining her to the floor for her own safety during her remaining time there. The case of Lizzie Halliday became one of extraordinary intrigue and horror, prompting intense scrutiny as it awaited trial. 
On June 21, 1894, Lizzie Halliday faced conviction at the Sullivan County Oyer and Terminer Court for the murders of Margaret McQuillan and Sarah Jane McQuillan. Remarkably, she became the first woman in history to receive the death penalty by electrocution, utilizing New York State's recently introduced electric chair. However, before the sentence could be carried out, Governor Roswell P. Flower intervened and commuted her punishment to life imprisonment in a mental institution, as a medical commission had declared her mentally unstable. Subsequently, Halliday was transferred to the Matawan State Hospital for the Criminally Insane, where she remained for the rest of her life. Over time, she transformed into a model patient, earning trust and privileges, such as sewing rights that granted her access to tools, including scissors. During her stay, she developed a close relationship with Nellie Wicks, one of the attendants at Matawan. However, Halliday was profoundly disturbed by the news of Wicks's plans to depart from the institution. Tragically, in 1906, Halliday acted out in a horrific manner, ending Nellie Wicks's life by brutally stabbing her 200 times with a pair of scissors. This shocking act added another grave crime to her already notorious record. Halliday's existence within the asylum endured, but her health ultimately deteriorated. On June 28, 1918, she succumbed to Bright's disease, a condition that had afflicted her for some time. Her passing marked the conclusion of a deeply troubled life, with a significant portion spent locked away in the confines of the mental institution.